Welcome to another sewing technique video. Today I'll be showing you how to match the print of your fabric over the top of seams. This is a really great technique if you want to make your garments look designer and well made. Here are my top tips for pattern matching. Buy more fabric than you need. If you're matching many seams then I'd buy an extra half a meter of fabric. Even more if you're making a long dress or using a very big print. Carefully choose which seams to pattern match. The best seams to match are the ones that are parallel or perpendicular to the salvage. This can be center front and back seams for the bodice and skirts and waist seams. Seams that are cut on an angle to the salvages can't be completely matched. For this reason, I don't often pattern match the side seams and skirts cut on the bias. The seam should be flat and plain. You don't need to match seams of gathers and pleats because the print will be lost in all the fabric. In general, cut out the pieces that you need to pattern match last so you can check that you have enough fabric left to do this. Today I'll be showing you how to match the centre back seam of dresses, chevron stripes, waist seams and also the skull up edge of a lace dress. You'll be able to apply these techniques to your own projects. So let's get started. Pattern matching the centre back of a garment is the most common form of pattern matching that you'll see. This seam always catches the eye. Note that you can only do this when the centre back seam is parallel to the grain line, otherwise the grain line might be wonky in these pieces. Today we'll be matching the centre back seam of Simplicity 8591, which I'm making in a border print. Please note that I'm cutting all pieces on the cross grain to make the best use of the border. Cutting on the cross grain means that all the pieces need to be cut perpendicular to the selvage. I'm going to draw a new grain line on the pattern pieces with a set square. Just place one edge of the square on the grain line then draw on the other side to make a 90 degree angle. This will be my new grain line. Figure out which side creates the centre back seam. This is usually indicated on the pattern. Make markings at 1.5cm from the raw edge. Use a ruler to join these lines together. This line will represent the seam line of the seam we're going to pattern match. I'm going to start by cutting out the bodice back, which has the seam that I want to match. When we pattern match we only cut one piece at a time, so make sure that you're cutting this on a single layer of fabric. Align the grain line of this piece with the salvage. Pin and cut this piece out. Take this piece that you've cut over to your ironing board. Fold up the raw edge of the centre back by 1.5cm on the wrong side of the fabric and iron it into place. Flip the fabric over to the right side and place some pins on the fold that you made. Grab the rest of your fabric. Arrange the fold of the piece that you just cut onto the fabric so that it's covering the exact same print. You need to have a generous area of fabric around it to allow for the other copy of the back piece to be cut out. Arrange the pins on the fold to go through all layers of the fabric. We'll be placing the centre back seam of the pattern piece directly on top of the other copy of the bodice back. I find it easiest to fold along the line that you made at 1.5cm and press this against the fold of the other piece. Pin the pattern into place away from the fold. Unpin the piece that you've already cut. Unfold the seam allowance for the centre back seam. Pin around the edges of the pattern piece and cut the pattern out. Moving along to pattern matching the centre back of the skirt. My skirt is a seamless border print skirt. This means that I'm cutting a very long rectangle along the border for the length of my fabric, which is about 2.5 metres. I measured the length of the skirt in the original pattern piece. I then made the markings at this length from the border down the length of the fabric and drew a line between these markings. Cut along this line all the way down the fabric. Try to trim the edges of the fabric to be as straight as possible. 
go back to your ironing board. Fold up one of the short ends of the skirt by 1.5cm on the wrong side. Iron into place and pin on the right side. Lay the skirt on the table. Fold the skirt in half so that the wrong sides are together. Bring the short ends of the skirt together. Place the end with the fold on top of the other and move it around so the patterns will match. Pin close to the fold to hold the match together. Flip the fabric over to the wrong side. Trim the raw edges so that they are now 1.5 cm. Rearrange the pins so that the raw edges are together and straight. I've gone ahead and sewn this dress together up until the centre back zipper needs to be sewn. I've made sure that one side of the seam has the seam allowance of 1.5cm folded away. What you now need to do is shimmy around the fold of this piece on top of the other side of the fabric that needs to be matched to. Pin into place outside of the seam allowance. Unfold the raw edge and pin them straight. To check how well the seam matches, I suggest doing a basting stitch on the pieces that you matched. To do this, simply change your stitch length to the maximum on the straight stitch and sew as normal. Sew a basting stitch directly on top of the fold that you made on one of these pieces. The seam has lined up pretty well with minimal deviations from the seam allowance. I need to sew a lapped zipper under the seam, but I can continue with the basting stitches like this. It's essential that the seam is iron split before we continue. Push a small flat surface underneath the seam that you matched on the inside of the dress. I'm just using a sewing toolbox. Grab your zipper and move it directly underneath the seam. To make a zipper lapped to one side, you need to move the seam so that it's beside the left side of the teeth. The seam must not be on top of the teeth. To do this, I press my nail down on top of the seam to make sure it's sitting just beside the teeth. Then I pin into place. Do this down the length of the zipper. Make sure you stop pinning near the end of the zipper. If we flip the dress to the wrong side, you can see that the zipper is pinned to one side and all the seam is straight and neat. Base down the length of the zipper close to the teeth. Do this for both sides of the zipper. Grab your quick unpick and rip open the basting stitch up until the stopper for the zipper. Now we can sew the zipper for real. Now you can sew the rest of the skirt on top of the basting stitch. Pull out the basting stitch when you're done. Overall, I'm happy with how it turned out. The print at the bottom of the dress matches really well. The print matching on the bodice isn't perfect but I'm happy with it. Unfortunately, very small and detailed prints are difficult to match. The back of the dress looks really neat and well made. Stripes are the easiest to pattern match because they repeat quite often and most stripes are identical. We'll be pattern matching the front and back of Vintage Vogue 8789. In this case, the grey line is diagonal on the pattern piece, so the stripes come together at the centre to make chevron stripes. I'm going to draw in the seam lines at the centre front of the bodice piece. To do this, I'm simply going to make markings at 1.5cm from the edge of the pattern. I then draw a line to connect them up. Do this for your centre back seam as well. I'm going to start by cutting out one copy of each of the bodice front and back. 
In this case, the grain line is parallel to the neckline, which is represented by this line. My stripes are parallel with the selvage, so I'm going to place the neckline of my pattern piece directly on top of the edge of a stripe. This creates a really nice effect and it's easy to pattern match. Pin and cut out one copy. Be sure to only use one layer of fabric. Do this for the bodice front and back. Fold over the raw edge of the centre front edge by 1.5cm on the wrong side. Refer back to the pattern if you can't remember which side this is. On the right side, pin on top of the fold. Do the same for the centre back edge. Grab your pattern pieces and fold along the seam line you drew at the centre front and back. Back to the fabric, we're going to lie this piece on top of the fabric where the print matches. In my case, I'm lining up the fold to make a pretty V shape so that the flowers will match. Next, we'll place the pattern piece on top of the fabric. I'm also placing the center seam line on the pattern piece directly on top of the fold of the piece that I already cut out. Remove the piece that you already cut out. Unfold the seam allowance for the pattern piece and pin the rest of the pattern. Once again, I'm lining up the neckline with the stripe. Now you can cut it out. I'm going to do the same for the bodice back pieces too. Just like with the previous example, I've basted these pieces together on the seam that needs to be matched. Once you've done this right, you should have nice chevron stripes. Sew over the basting with a proper seam to hold them together. I've gone ahead and sewn the entire dress up. The pattern matching looks great. It's created really nice chevron stripes in the front and back. You can use this technique for matching stripes on seams that are diagonal to the selvage. Let's move along to the next example. Most waist seams are curved, so you won't be able to match the pattern of the entire seam. That being said, pattern matching the waist seam still makes the outfit look really neat and lovely. Today I'll be matching the waist and midriff seam for Simplicity 8534. For this dress, I'll be matching the seam connecting pieces 1, 9 and 11, which are the skirt front, midriff front and the left side of the bodice front. The right side of the bodice is mostly covered, so I'm not going to pattern match it. I'm going to make a line at 1.5cm to represent the seam allowance on the bottom edge of the midriff. Repeat for the bodice front. The fabric I'm using is very difficult to work with because the print is large and only in the centre of the fabric. So I bought a lot more fabric than the pattern suggested so I can best place the print. In this case, I'm going to cut out the pieces that need to be pattern matched first to make sure that they are on the printed area. I'm going to start by cutting out the skirt front piece at the very bottom of the print that I want on the front of the dress. This piece has to be placed on the fold, so I'm going to fold the fabric in half and pin and cut out the skirt front at the center of the fabric. If your skirt doesn't need to be cut on the fold, then you can go ahead and align the grain line with the selvage. Mark the center front of your skirt with Taylor's chalk by folding the piece in half. Fold down the top edge of the skirt by 1.5cm with your iron on the wrong side. Pin this into place on the right side of the fabric. Move your fabric along to a fresh motif. Place the skirt front directly on top of the matching print on the fabric and pin. Once again, place the seam line that you drew at the bottom of the midriff on top of the fold of the skirt at the center front. 
The midriff front also needs to be cut on the fold. This means that I need to align the side of the midriff piece which is placed on the fold with the marking that I made on the skirt piece for the center front. Pin the center front of the midriff piece into place. Unpin the skirt piece. I'm going to fold the fabric in half directly underneath the edge with the fold marking. Check that the fold has the same width to the selvage. Then pin the rest of the pattern to the fabric. Cut out the midriff piece. Once again, mark the center of this piece at the top edge. Take the midriff piece over to the iron and fold up the top edge by 1.5cm on the wrong side. Pin the fold on the right side of the fabric. Match the midriff piece to another section of fabric and pin into place. The centre front of my bodice piece is between the two notch markings. The centre front should be marked on your pattern. Once again, place the seam line of the bodice pattern piece on top of the fold of the midriff piece. Match the centre front of the pattern piece with the marking that you made on the midriff. Pin at the centre front of the pattern piece. Remove the midriff piece. Align the grain line of the bodice piece with the selvage. Pin and cut out the bodice piece. Now I can cut out the rest of the dress with the leftover fabric. So I've constructed most of the dress except for the seams that I need to match. I've also ironed aside the seam allowance at the top edge of the midriff piece and the skirt piece, just like I did when I cut them out. Lay out the bodice piece. Lay the fold of the top edge of the midriff piece on top at the very center. Check that the raw edges are seen together nicely without too much deviation. We only want to match the pattern directly on top of the center front for a couple of inches. So move around the fold ever so slightly to make the pattern match and pin into place. Flip the pattern piece over to the wrong side and pin the raw edges together. Remove the pins on the right side. Pin the rest of the waist seam together. Sew over the seam at 1.5cm with a basting stitch. If you're happy with how it looks, then sew over the basting stitch. Repeat this process for the seam between the midriff and the skirt. I'm going to go ahead and sew the entire dress so we can see how it turned out. I'm really happy with how it looks. The flowers right at the center front look perfectly matched. There's less matching outwards from there but that can't be helped with curved seams. You can use this method to match waist seams of dresses, tops of peplums or any waist seam where both the fabrics are flat against each other. Scallop edges are the beautiful decorative selvages that you'll see on laces and meshes. Matching the scallops makes the garment look elegant and refined. I'm sewing Simplicity 8545 in an embroidered mesh fabric with a double scallop edge. I want to have the scallop at the bottom of my skirt instead of the hem. To do this, I'm going to take the pattern pieces and draw a line at the bottom at the given hemline. My hem is 1.5cm, so I'm going to make a few markings at this length from the edge, then draw a line between them. When we cut out the fabric, we need to place the bottom edge of the scallop on top of this line. Make this marking on all of your skirt pieces. For me, this is the skirt front and back. Make a line at 1.5cm to represent the seam allowance on both the side seams of the skirt back. I'm going to start off by cutting out the skirt front. I've folded over enough fabric so that I can place the pattern piece on top of the fold, and also so that the fold is underneath the end of a scallop. Fold up the hemline that you made on the pattern piece. Move the pattern onto the fabric so that the hemline is on top of the scallop and the edge with the rectangle arrow is on top of the fold. Pin and cut out the center front piece. Don't cut the scallop edge. 
On the wrong side of the skirt, I'm going to fold over and iron the side seams of the skirt by 1.5cm on the wrong side. Do this for both side seams of the skirt. Now we're going to cut out the two copies of the skirt back, and we need to do this individually. Grab your skirt front and place it on top of the fabric so that the fold that you made matches the print. Pin the fold through all the layers. Grab your skirt back piece. Fold along the hemline. Place the hemline on the end of the scallop edge and the seam line directly on top of the fold of the skirt front. Pin into place. Pin the rest of the pattern. My skirt side seams are slightly curved, so I'm only going to align the seam and the bottom. I'm letting the rest of the pattern fall where it wants, so that the hem won't be distorted. Cut out your first skirt back piece. Take this piece over to the iron. Fold over the seam allowance by 1.5cm on the wrong side of the centre back seam. You may need to refer back to the pattern piece for which side is the centre back seam. Place the fold you just made on the fabric where the print will match. Place the pattern piece for the skirt back on top, matching the seam line on the pattern with the fold of the cut piece. Do this for a few inches above the scallop. Make sure that the hemline is on top of the scallop. Remove the piece that you previously cut and smooth out the pattern. Pin the pattern, but leave the left side of the pattern unpinned. We won't cut out the pattern quite yet. The last seam to pattern match is a little tricky and you have to break the rules a little, so this last part is optional. My edge has small scallops and the dress is quite full, so I can make a partial match on the last seam of the skirt. You should have already ironed under the seam allowance on the right hand side of the skirt front. Bring this over to the skirt back that you've already pinned. Pin the scallop directly on top of the scallop closest to the pattern piece. The pattern doesn't have to perfectly match, we're more concerned with matching the scallop. Bring the marked seam line on the pattern piece over to the fold of the other piece and pin it into place. You'll need to tuck the fabric slightly underneath. Remove the already cut piece. Pin the rest of the pattern. You may need to increase the width of the skirt at this side seam. Since the tuck I made was so small, the side seam won't move very much. Cut out the last skirt back piece. I've sewn up the side seams with French seams. Now we can see the results. The scallop edge is continuous all the way around to the bottom of the skirt. The pattern doesn't completely match for the side seams, but I still think it looks really good. You can use this technique to match scallop edges of hems and sleeves for all of your lace projects. I hope you found this sewing technique video useful. Pattern matching brings your sewing projects to the next level. It's an absolute must once you get better at sewing. Please like and subscribe if you found this video useful. See you soon!